Hey everyone, I got a really exciting show for you today. I have somebody I follow on Instagram. I figured, hey, it's 2020. Why don't we just bring somebody to the table that talks how it is, really get you motivated, help you see kind of the, the forest and the trees all at the same time. Let's welcome Dave to the show. How you doing, Dave? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks so much for having me. Oh, I, 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 I was really a pleasure you reached out or you said yes to this because, you know, we don't really know each other yet. Uh, I've been following you for a while, and uh, I just wanted to have you on this, you know, one rental at a time podcast, because again, you say it how it is. You have some really motivating quotes that I think people need to hear and talk about. Uh, but before we get into those, why don't you just tell everybody who you are, what you do, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I love it, man. So uh, once they kicked me out of high school, I realized that I had the entrepreneurial DNA, and I'm known as Dave Daly, the monster motivator. I I do keynotes around the country, uh, workshops, brand builder, uh, boot camp workshops, uh, and I'm also a host of a uh, podcast, a show called Brand Builder TV. Um, I also own and operate a fire restoration business out here in uh, Southern California as well. So a uh, few balls in the air, but that seems to be the uh, the entrepreneurial DNA. And and you know, like you said, uh, black and white. It's interesting that you use that term because uh, way back. Um, few years back <clears throat> going through marriage counseling with my me and my ex-wife and we're still really really close and uh one of the things she used to say is he thinks everything's so black and white and I told him not everything's so black and white and I said Michelle the sooner you understand that it's when you adopt that mentality it just makes it so much easier here's what I believe man and again I love to use that term is it is black and white yeah. and gray is for the excuse makers. Oh, yes. And, and I believe it's this, man. At the end of the day, life is simple, not always easy, but the simpler you make it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. And I'm so a simple true. guy. So true. So true. Let's talk about this getting kicked out of high school. I love that, right? As soon as they kick me out of high school, just kind of pass, just pass you and move you on, right? Just down the assembly line. How did you know you were an entrepreneur? Because a lot of people question themselves, right? Coming out of high school, do I go to college? Do I not go to college? I mean, how did you know, you know, that's not my path. This is the way I'm going. You just, you just knew or? Did you have well, yeah, let, I can even go way back. So um, it's, it started out my whole, I'll give you a, my quick uh, bio and I'll start from the beginning. Okay. I was put up for adoption at birth. I was in an orphanage the first 18 months of my life in North Philly. I'm from, I'm from Jersey. I'm from, my family's from South Philly. Uh, believe it or not, I tell people I'm not from Encinitas. I know it's hard to, uh, I know it's hard to believe. Um, but left back in the second grade, diagnosed with ADD, said I had a learning disorder, never graduated high school. And at 19, I'm sitting in a jail cell looking at eight to 10 if things don't go my way. Wow. So I was brought up in that push-pull environment. The professionals with all the degrees on the wall said I was broken, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't learn in that cookie cutter mode, but I was so, so blessed um, to have had a mom that never bought into it. Awesome. Right? So I had that push pull. She told me I was a gift from God and, and she was my adopted mother, a gift from God. I could do whatever it is that I wanted. And she told all the professionals over and over and over when they said I was broke, he's just a little boy. So, um, so that I give that little bit of um, context, and then what happened is once I got kicked out of high school, I was uh, raised. My parents had adopted me at 18 months. They were two generations ahead, so I was raised in that World War II generation, right? My dad was 82nd Airborne World War II. Wow. His mentality in life was lace up your boots, get to work. Nobody wants to hear it. So I was very <laughs> blessed, right, to be um, raised in that environment. And when I got kicked out of high school, he said, that's great. Now what are you going to do? How are you going to pay your bills? And I thought, that's a good question. What am I going to do? So what I did is I went right into construction, right? That's what I knew. Okay. I knew that I could lift this up over here, carry it over here, and put it down over there. Um, but I also realized real quick that I hate that. I don't uh, want to do that. So long story short, I, and I have a whole keynote on this called the Tommy story. I um, got connected, got attra uh, with, attracted, whatever you want to use, um, with a man, a gentleman named Tommy. Okay. And Tommy had a very successful business. And when I went in for the interview the very first time, I never did a, I went in for a business interview in my life. And it's a really awesome uh, keynote, if I have to say myself. 
But ultimately what it is, is Tommy was the kid from the neighborhood 15 years ahead of me, right? Uh. So when I went in, Tommy saw himself in me and I saw myself in Tommy. When I went in and Tommy had this big successful business, here's what I saw. Tommy was a kid from the neighborhood, wasn't supposed to make it. And everyone that worked for him had the degrees on the wall. Uh. So I, so Tommy started that whole journey and that belief, right? Yeah. Of, um, man, if he could do it, I could do it. So that's a, it's a kind of a, a 30,000 foot view. Well, that's awesome. And, and what you really, what I took from that is the sooner you can get a hold of belief, right? You saw in Tommy, right? Again, 15 years, your senior. Wow. And, and if he could do it, I could do it. And that's, that's a powerful thing. Cause you could hold on to that, right? You can bring that in. You can have that be your little fire. That's always stoked when the time gets hard, you can lean on it. And, and frankly, you could always go back to Tommy probably and ask him questions. Hey, what about this? What about that? It's, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful stuff. So how did you go from picking stuff up, moving it from point A to point B, right? Where, where does that take you in the construction world? When, when, what happens after that? So again, that's where I, I uh, had stumbled on, attracted to whatever verbiage you want to use with Tommy. Yep. And Tommy had a business where you were selling copiers and fax machines B2B. Okay. So Tommy taught me how to walk into any business um, talk, look them right in the eye, speak to them, get the decision maker. And I was doing 40 to 50 cold calls a day in center city, Philly. I started right. top floor, work my way down. Yeah. So the things that Tommy taught me, I still take today. And to give you a little bit of a, a quick uh, overview of my business experience over the last 20 plus years, I've been fortunate enough to have built and sold three companies in three different industries. Yeah. And I also crashed one to the ground. Okay. Right. And I tell people, you know, that when I get introduced, I just did a speaking engagement for a bunch of entrepreneurs the other day. And when I give my little intro to the event planner, I said, make sure that you highlight that I crashed that business to the ground because that's, there's a window of time that went through a bankruptcy, crash a business to the ground. There's a window of time that there's not a university in this world that could have taught me what I learned. Yeah. Now what I share with my students, with my audience, right? Yeah. That is a window of time that is invaluable, right? Yeah. That's what people have to learn and that's what they have to understand. That's why I put together the Brand Builder Bootcamp. It's about taking people behind that black curtain. That's a difference between 2020 and 2004. Your personal brand is everything. Yes. They want to learn and know that they you walked in their shoes. Yep, yeah. That brings me to one of the quotes. Again, I have a whole list of them that I've written down. Uh, you always pass failure on your way to success. Uh, I just love that quote because it kind of speaks to the realities. Nobody, nobody hits a thousand or a hundred or, or whatever it is in baseball, right? No, you don't always win, right? It's kind of the point. Right? It is. And that maps to the, what I believe is probably one of my biggest messages, right? It's, so my book is called Fearless is Bullshit. Yep. Okay. And I launched that in 2016. And what the, what that means is we were brought up to think, especially as guys, right? Yeah. We were brought up to think that if you feel fear, you're weak, you're oh, yeah. broke. And what I realized is looking back, fear is a feeling just like love, just like anger. It's either your strongest propeller yeah. or your heaviest anchor. The goal is to face that fear, get on the other side and create that courage. Courage comes from the three letter word core, which comes from in here. Mm-hmm. And that's what I, I tell people. And, you know, the title of my book is Fearless is Bullshit. The subtitle is, let me teach you how to get your lunch money back from the <laughs> ultimate bully, right? Fear. Fear, yeah. fear. The fear barrier is the ultimate bully. And every, most people, the biggest fear is what other people think. Yeah. Right? That's the biggest stopper. And I give people, here's the biggest, here's the quickest, most powerful life hack for that fear that you're going to get your lunch money back every single time if you adopt this mentality. You ready? Yeah, let's go. We are human beings. That means we are going to judge and we are going to be judged yeah. on a daily basis. That Now adopt that mentality. Now how we move past that and get your lunch money back from your bully, here it is. Your only job 
is to make them accurate. Uh -huh. Here's what I mean. I'm judging on a daily basis by my appearance. And I hear, there's, when I meet people, I hear it every single week, every day. You're so much nicer than we thought. <laughs> Right? My yeah. only job is to make them accurate. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Give me some gold nuggets here. That's awesome. Um, the other, another quote that you have that I think people just need to appreciate, especially in this kind of environment, is if you live in the past, you pay rent twice. Yes. Right. We, again, you are humans, right? So we have that ability to, to remember and reflect. And for whatever reason, you know, we reflect more on the negatives or think about the misses or the regrets or whatever, a lot more than the positives. Right. I, and yeah, I don't know if it's just me, but that's, that seems to be something I've had to struggle with. So, you know, what do you mean by that quote? Did I get it right? You know, what, 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 what advice do you have for folks? Yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, life is about momentum. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's either going for you or against you. It's one or the other, right? It's either your heaviest anchor, your strongest propeller. And I actually, part of my uh, brand builder boot camp, I have what's called the Monster Momentum Morning. It's a two hour, uh, for me anyway, it's a two hour system formula, whatever you want to put on it, multiple meditations along with something that I call the daily, and that's D-A-L-E-Y, branding, right? The yeah. daily gift list. So the Monster Momentum Morning sets you up with multiple meditations to now Create that strong propeller instead of that heavy anchor that most people are starting their day with. And to 10x that, I have what's called the daily uh, gift list. And what that is, is every time that life throws me a gift, I put it down in my phone. At the end of the day, I usually have 30, 25 to 30, 32 gifts that life threw me. And I know I missed about 50 of them, right? Wow. Because we're conditioned to to tell me, we're conditioned to say, hey, you can't believe I just had a flat tire. This is the worst day of my life. But they forget about that unbelievable customer service in the same day. So mm -hmm. that when you focus on that customer service versus that flat tire, everything starts to change. But understanding that life is all about momentum, right? Yes. It's either going against you or it's going for you. And the, a great example is, and I, I call them the energy vampires right? Okay. You want to run from the energy vampires. What energy vampire actually is, is the wrong momentum. People get caught up in that negative toxic momentum. And then all of a sudden it just snowballs, but they don't realize that they could actually create that snowball in such a positive, powerful momentum. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree a thousand percent or whatever the right number is. Momentum is such a key part of, of life. You know, the business of, uh, I, I talk about rental properties a lot, right? When you get on this momentum and you finally get this rock moving in the right direction, um, you've got to keep it moving forward, right? I, I've known so many people that start to taste success. Maybe it's a workout routine, right? They've been doing it for two months and they lost four pounds or whatever it is. And then for whatever reason, instead of continuing that habit, they go, oh, I can have a cookie now. Or, oh, I can have a slice of cheesecake now. Or, oh, I can skip my workout because it's cold. and how do you stay, how do you keep that momentum moving? Because it has to be important. Once generated, don't stop it. But, but so yeah. many people peel off. I, I love that. It's, it's really can, called a lifestyle, right? Uh -huh. So I used to own a sports nutrition store out here when I first moved out here. And I'd have people come in all the time. I want to lose weight. I'm going to get in shape. I want, what kind of diet can you put me on? I go, listen, I can give you the best meal plan, the best workout for your goal. But unless we start to, unless you understand that it's a lifestyle change, not a diet, it's only short term. That's uh, why I, I really created, and that's where momentum comes in, right? That's why the, so let me give you the definition of the monster momentum warning. Okay. Ask, align, allow. Let me go deeper on that. Yep. Ask means clarity, right? You're getting clear on what you want and what you're putting out there allow right or i'm sorry align means inspired action there's a big difference between and we hear this all the time and we're thrown up on the, by this phrase on instagram 
on a daily basis, grind, grind, hustle, hustle, grind. What people don't understand, a lot of people don't understand is the hustle and the grind, unless it's backed up and wrapped around inspired action, it's the diet. But when you have that hustle and grind and that's backed up by inspired action, now that becomes a lifestyle change, Yes. right? The flame never goes out. And the last is allow, right? And what allow means is expectation. So you have clarity, you have inspired action, which now, right, supports expectation. And what is expectation? It's belief. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's awesome. And you're so right. I'm glad you put a tag on it because I was struggling with it. I'm going to use that if you don't mind lifestyle, right? It's, yeah. it's one thing to kind of, you know, be going in a direction, taste a little success, but unless it's really a lifestyle, it's your first speed bump, your first off ramp, you're going to take it because, you know, other, you know, you're gonna take the easy way too many times. We take the easy way too many times and then it, it just slips into nothingness or whatever. And, 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 and what is that? It's momentum. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's momentum. It, it, it all goes back to the same thing. And I tell people all the time, especially when I do keynotes or uh, workshops, Listen, if anybody in the personal development world tells you they invented something new, run, don't look back. It's <laughs> yes. all goes back to antiquity. I'm only sharing it in my flavor from what I've learned and what I've uh, applied. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, your special sugar, sugar and spice is awesome. Uh, and you're right, it is momentum. But it's, for me, it's holding that momentum. I've seen too many people, no matter what your goal is, you get that little taste of success. You get that. And I'm, I've had it happen over my years. And then you just take the first off ramp. But you're right. If you make it a lifestyle and that fire doesn't die, that's, that's the difference. I, I, I love that. So uh, shout out to you. That's, that's pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to talk about that I see all over your Instagram now that we've rolled into 2020 is this notion of happiness, right? Yes. Uh, I want to definitely talk about that and, and make that a big topic because I think too many people are not happy. I think it's, it's the greatest thing not talked about. Most people aren't happy. Uh, they're faking it, maybe in social media, but why don't we talk about that a little bit? Why, why it's important? We'll, we'll bat that around a little bit. It's such a superpower, right? If you think about it, if, if we really want to get into the practical end of that, and I could go either the mystic or the practical, but if we go to the practical end of that is simply ask yourself, right? Would you rather do business? Would you rather hang out with people that are actually happy or not happy, right? So the energy that you put out there is what you get back. Quantum physics tells us that, right? There's no unicorns and, and, uh, and you know, foo-foo uh, bullshit. This is backed up by real scientific proof. And um, when you... When you focus, here's the other thing that's a misconception that I think maps back to unhappiness is the word selfishness, right? Oh. People think that selfishness is a bad thing. It's not when it's in the right context, right? Here's, what, how, here's how I live my life. I'm not always G-rated, right? <laughs> I'm not um, the most, defi by definition, polished speaker, person, business um, yeah. entrepreneur. But here's how I live my life. If I use a word or a sentence that offends you, but my intention is pure to give back and help, you got to figure that out. That's your problem, not mine. I can put my head on the pillow. It's about that intention, right? right? And I believe that so many people are allowing, again, it goes back to momentum, allowing the, the opinions of what other people think they how they should live. Oh, I should do this, right? Because this is what I'm supposed to do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use a great example because I am the biggest fan of women. See, I believe and I know, and I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for amazing, amazing women in my life. And I'm gonna tell you right now, and I've said this multiple times. The baddest human being on the planet, bar none, is a good woman. What's my definition of a good woman? It's a woman that handles her business personally and professionally. I, my first business that I built and sold was a public adjusting firm in Philly. My, my office manager, Robin, once we start to scale, she ran the show, right? She ran the ship. Um, 
My ex-wife did all the book work, all the, all the bookkeeping, everything in the back end to keep everything that I, I was the front guy. But if I didn't have things cleaned up on the back, it would have been an absolute nightmare, right? They gave me the opportunity to build that for five years and be able to actually sell it. My mom, an absolutely amazing, amazing woman, the definition of unconditional love, and I tested that unconditional plenty of times, <laughs> came through with flying colors. But here's where I'm going with this. Most women, good women, forget about themselves. They put themselves last, right? The family first, the business first, and they forget about themselves. And here's why I use them as such an example, because they are the epicenter of most families in the world we live in today in the United States. That's just a fact. Right. And here's the other thing. Anybody out there that disagrees with that statement that they are the baddest human beings on the planet, I will bring them into any professional office right now. Doctors, lawyers, dentists, chiropractors, you tell me who's running the show every single time. You tell me who's running the show. I go in to see my chiropractor, his secretary and his office manager tell him where to go, when to go and how to do it. That's just a, that's a fact. Right. So putting yourself first, right? Let me put it this way. When you don't put yourself first, you go against nature. So if you are a leader, whether in your household or your business or both, which most women are, they just have to be reminded. Yeah. And you don't eat first, you go against nature. See, the pack um, has to be able to survive to eat for tomorrow. And in order for you to pack to survive to eat for tomorrow, the leader has to be at its strongest point, right? That's the oxygen mask, right? Oh, yeah. As the plane's going down, if you don't put your mask on, you can't help the pack. Yep. So I use women because, again, I'm such a fan, and they are so badass. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny you bring that up because, again, I, I've been raised by uh, very strong women my entire life, giving them kudos all the time in this channel. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree a thousand percent. So I want to talk about your book now, right? Fearless is bullshit. Uh, I'm curious, A, did anybody ever give you flack for that title or you just look them in the eye and say, no, that's going to be it? You know, no one's ever said it to me, but I'm sure that there's, there's people offended. And I'm sure yeah. that there's people trying to figure out uh, what that means. I'm sure there's people that, that don't agree with it. And then just I'm sure there's there's plenty of people that do, especially once, once I break it down. Yeah. Um, it's really... Uh, it, it, to me, it, it's, it's life 101. Yeah, no, I love it. I, and again, it's just who you are and what you do. It's like, you, you know, take me for I am. The intention is good, right? The whole, I'm going to lay my head on the pillow. So I get it. I love it. It's just, you know, you, you just never know where people's opinions lie on this matter. So is the book just kind of your biography or your story? I haven't picked it up yet, but will, um, what, what can I look forward to reading? So it's, it's actually a combination of, um, uh, a bio, and then also uh, a lot of self-help, personal development with some practical steps combined. Because I'm a big fan of um, uh, braiding in, if you will, uh, the mystic and the practical. I, I just, I, because I believe that's, I, here's, here's how much I believe in that. Any program um, that is trying to teach you to do better in life, whether personally or professionally, and it doesn't have personal development at its, as its foundation, I believe is incomplete. Uh, because if a personal development is yeah. life 101, and you just can't get around that. So it's a combination. And the other thing is um, uh, everything uh, that I was taught over the years, I've had some amazing mentors and, and coaches over the years, uh, that's all that is combined into one book. And, and here's the other thing that I, I help people with too is part of the Brand Butter Bootcamp is I have a program called Launch Your Book on 45 Days or Less. And people are like, what are you talking about? When I hold that book up, I say, I never wrote one word of this book. Here's what happened. I got connected with my uh, publisher and writer and, and uh, her name's Kelly. And she said, I'd love to write a book with you. I said, Kelly, I got this book. Blah, blah, blah. So she says, uh, great, when can we do this? I said, Here's, here's the one problem. She goes, what? I said, I'd rather have root canal done than write a paragraph. Exactly. She goes, what? I said, I'm not a writer. She yeah. goes, well, where's the book? I said, it's up here. 
She goes, what? I said, I have the chapters titled. I left it on my desk. It was a Saturday night. I said, I want to write a book, 2016. I said this, I want to write a book. I never wrote a book. So logically, in my mind, I said, well, what do I do? I have the titles. So I titled 10 chapters, just titles, left it sitting on my book. Three months later, I get connected with, um, on a podcast with Kelly. She says to me, uh, she says, um, I would love to do this. I said, I, I'd rather have root canal done than write a book. She goes, where's the book? I said, it's in my head. She goes, okay, I, I, I'm a ghostwriter. How I and oh, and then she says to me, oh, I said to her, I said, but I have two stipulations, right? Like I'm somebody that should have stipulations. I never <laughs> she goes, what are they? I said, um, I'm a momentum guy. I want to get it done in a month, and it has to be my flavor. Ah. She goes, well, putting it in your flavor is my wheelhouse. That's my thing. But a month, you're out of your mind. I said, Kelly, I will have a chapter to you every other night for the next ten days, and then I will work with my graphic designer. She goes, you're out of your mind, but let's do it, right? She goes, I uh, want to do it with you, right? So you ready? Yeah. Three weeks in, we get the first draft. She sends it out to five of our people, and they all email back, different people, different times, and they all email back. She calls me up. She goes, hey, we got, the, we got the reviews in for your rough draft. Now, this is three weeks in. I said, what are they? And she started to laugh. She goes, they all pretty much said the same thing. We love the book. And the first chapter is so Jersey. I said, that a girl, you <laughs> nailed it, right? And she goes, yeah, that's my wheelhouse. You ready? 32 days on Amazon and barnesandnoble.com, done. Wow, congratulations. That's, that's momentum, a, baby, that's, right? That's momentum, that's yeah. momentum. And so many, and I put that program together because launch your book of 45 days or less because I hear people all the time go, well, I started a chapter and then I put it away and then I, I just, I don't know. I can't. So it's like, okay, let me give you an outline, right? Yeah. Now, now we're going to crush the excuses. Yeah. Now it's time to say either step up or walk away. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Where I wanted to finish this, uh, this interview at was really about 2020 and happiness. Any words of advice? Cause I, people watching this, uh, you know, a, I don't know them, you know, but I'm guessing they want to be happier. They could be happier. Any words of advice? Maybe it's lifestyle. Maybe it's momentum. Um, you know, what, what do you, what, what would you tell someone if they're looking at 2020 and going, you know, I'm not happy. You know why? Because they're not, they're not allowing themselves to be them. Uh, right. So what, when you're not actually who you are and you know that deep down, there's a disconnect right? Uh, yeah, there's a yeah. disconnect with source energy. And that's just a reality. There's a disconnect. And what happens is, again, it starts to build, right? It starts to build. Now, here's, here's the other thing. I'm such a big, big believer. And my core message is really comes down to this. They're not happy because their self image doesn't allow them to be happy. See, your self image can be built up. It could be tore down, mm -hmm. but it can't be outperformed. So whatever that level of your self-image is, it's a, it's a um, thermostat. It stops, but it can be built up and it can be tore down. And I feel so strongly about this that I say this on every uh, stage and I'm on digital or physical. Your self-image dictates everything. And I feel so powerful about this that I tell every single adult the same thing. The greatest gift that you could give any child, whether it's your child or not, is a bulletproof self image. Uh -huh. And how you, right? Yeah. And my mom had such a big part early on, on building my self image when the professionals were trying to tear it down, yeah. right? So the greatest gift that you could give yourself and any child is a bulletproof self image. And one of the starting points of that is understanding momentum. And understanding that hack, your only job is to make them accurate. <laughs> I love this, Dave. This has been so much fun. I've enjoyed all of it. You were exactly as intense and authentic as I knew you would be. How can people follow you, track you? Obviously, you can go to Amazon and, and Barnes & Noble, get the book. But where else? You're doing so much. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm not hard to find. Dave Daly, D-A-L-E-Y-M-M. Monster Motivators, uh, DaveDalyMM.com on all of our uh, platforms. 
Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, TikTok. I'm on TikTok, <laughs> baby. Um, yeah. So, um, and that, again, that's, let me leave you with this. You ready? Yep. Let's give some real practical stuff right here, right now that I don't care what audience we have when it comes to business. At the end of the day, here's the deal. Branding and marketing in 2004. It's what you knew and who you knew. Branding and marketing in 2020. Do not get it twisted. It's what you know. It's who you know. But more important, who knows you? Yeah. I love that. Who knows you? That's awesome. This, right? This, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's, it's a different Ooh. world. I've been, I've been in the game 30 years. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Who knows you? Right? It is. And I say to people, raise a hand. How many people are on at least one social media platform? 99.9% .9 of the people raise their hand. It's going to be Facebook. It's going to be Instagram, right? Something. Yeah. You ready? You're a global brand, whether you like it or not. Yeah. You're right. Well, well, Dave, this has been awesome. I appreciate you saying yes to this out of the blue. Uh, people got a lot from this. Go check out his book. Go check it out. Dave Daily, uh, mm .com. Uh, A lot of fun. I look, look forward to watching you, you grow and uh, keep it up, man. I, I get motivation every time at the gym. I look at you I'm like, oh, this guy's <laughs> awesome. Awesome, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. And thank you for the invite. You got it, brother. Take care.